Hey, what's up? I'm Norris and welcome back to another Sew Alone. Now today we're going to be making my latest design with Mimi G style and simplicity pattern, which is a men's trench coat 9389. If you're new to sewing or need a refresher course, just click the link in the description box below. Now, because this is not a learn to sew video, if you need help as a beginner, you want to visit sewedacademy.com, which is an amazing resource for men's wear and women's wear. And if you sign up for the free trial, you'll get the first five courses free with no credit card required. Now that we have all of that out the way, let's start sewing. Okay, once again, like I said, we're going to be using pattern 9389 and we have two views. View A is the longer one. It's about knee length. And then view B is a little bit shorter. It comes like mid thigh. So you have two different options here. Um, if you look on the back, once again, you have all of the um, notions, fabrics, it has all the different sizes. Um, one thing to keep in mind when it comes to a, um, a little bit down here in the middle, it says finished garment measurements. Um, you want to definitely measure um, there because it's going to give you exactly um, how long it's going to be, how wide it's going to be, and also the chest measurement. Now, this right here is a trench coat, so you don't want it too fitted. You want a nice amount of ease. So um, what you would normally cut out of a regular jacket or a shirt, you want to maybe go up a little bit or just look at um, how much ease you'll have and then just use that measurement to go around your chest to see how how loose it's going to fit. And once again, like I said, you want to get a little bit extra room because this is a trench coat. Um, for the fabrics, you have so many different choices, um, cottons, linens, um, poplins, uh, you could do lightweight wool, suiting. It's just so many possibilities when it comes to this trench coat. Um, I necessarily, I would stay away from knits. You don't want any kind of stretch fabrics for this. One thing when it comes to the notions, I want to note, it says 11 one inch buttons and two um, one and a quarter inch buckles. Now the buckles are for the, the sleeve band. I won't be using buckles for my sleeve band. I will be using buttons. So where it says 11, I'm going to be adding two more, which is going to be 13 for me. Um, if you want to do the buckles, it's super easy to install. Um, I'll walk you through it, but I will be showing you how to alter the sleeve band so you can have a button and make it look very nice. All right. So now that we have all of this out the way, let's go through all the pattern pieces we're going to be using. Okay. The first pattern piece you're going to use is the carrier. You want to cut one of these out of your fabric. Next, we have pattern piece number 13, which is the back facing. You want to cut one on the fold of fabric and one on the fold of interfacing. Now this piece right here is the sleeve tab. You want to cut four of these out of fabric and two of these out of interfacing. Now this right here is going to be the pattern piece. I'm going to be shortening up because I'm not using a buckle. Um, the buckle version is going to make it a little bit longer so you can um, wrap it within the buckle. But since I'm not doing that, I'm going to show you how to shorten it up so you can have a button. Next, we have pattern piece number 10, which is the upper collar. You want to cut one of these on a fold of fabric and one on the fold of interfacing. Pattern piece number nine, which is the neck band. You want to cut two of these on a fold of fabric, one on the fold of interfacing. Pattern piece number 11, which is the under collar. You want to cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. Pattern piece number two, which is the welt. You want to cut two of these out of interfacing and two of these out of fabric. Pattern piece number eight, these are the shoulder tabs. You want to cut four of these out of fabric and two of these out of interfacing. Pattern piece number six, this is the yoke front. You want to cut one of these out of fabric and one of these out of lining. Now, I'm not going to cut um, the second lining piece. I'm going to cut two out of fabric because when you flip it up, you'll be able to see um, the fabric um, on both sides. Now, this is optional. Um, if you don't want it heavier, you want it a little bit lighter on underneath, um, you can cut yours out of lining, but I'm just giving you another option. Pattern piece number three, this is the um, pocket. You want to cut two of these out of fabric and two of these out of lining. Pattern piece number 14, this is the upper sleeve. You want to cut two of these out of fabric and two of these out of lining. Pattern piece number 15 is the, is the under sleeve. You want to cut two of these out of fabric and two of these out of lining. Now, one thing I want to note with these two uh, pieces, you're going to when you cut it out of fabric, you want to cut it out of the full piece. But when you cut it out of lining, 
you want to cut off an inch on the hem. The lining is gonna be a little bit shorter than the actual um, fabric pieces. Pattern piece number 17 is the belt. You wanna cut one of these out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Pattern piece number seven is the yoke back. You wanna cut one of these on the fold out of fabric. Now I'm gonna cut two of these on the fold instead of one. The reason is because when you lift it up, you'll be able to see the right side underneath as well as on the top, all right? So I'll show you that once we get there. It is, it is optional. Um, you can cut one, but I'm gonna cut two, and if you cut two, I'm gonna show you how to use it. Next, we have pattern piece number 12. Now, this is the front facing. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric and two of these out of interfacing. Next, we have pattern piece number four. This is the back piece. Uh, you wanna cut two of these out of your fabric. Now, last but not least, we have pattern piece number one. This is the front piece. You wanna cut two of these out of your fabric. Once you cut out all of your pattern pieces, um, out of fabric, we can begin sewing. Okay, so before we move on, I want to inform you that I will be using faux leather. Now, because I'm using faux leather fabric, I won't be interfacing any of my pieces. Now, if you see me throughout this process with a piece that's not interfaced, it's only because I'm using leather. You cannot put heat on leather. And because it's pretty thick, um, I wouldn't need interface it anyway. Now, if you're using any other fabric, such as a linen, a twill, um, a suiting, a light wool. You will be using interfacing for your pattern pieces that needs it. But if you're using a faux leather or any kind of other um, exotic fabric like the one I'm using, you won't be interfacing it. So just want to let you know, and I will be um, letting you know throughout the process, hey, look, this is not interfaced because it's a faux leather fabric. Also, I want you to know that I will be using these clamps here uh, for my leather pieces because you shouldn't be pinning your leather um, if you're using leather like I am. So you'll be seeing me use these if I say pin. If you're using just regular type of fabric, you will be pinning. But if you're using faux leather or any other fabrics like this, um, you should use um, these clamps here, which are amazing. Also, I will be finishing my seams off with um, bias tape. Now you could use your your serger, you can use your zigzag stitch, um, you can use peaking shears to finish off your seams. Now once you cut out all your pattern pieces out of fabric and also your lining and also your interfacing, if you using fabric for interfacing, we can begin sewing. Okay, so first you wanna grab your um, welt pieces and with right size facing, you want to pin them or clip them if you're using a faux leather like me. And once again, this is not interfaced because it's a faux leather. Um, once you have it pinned or clamped, we're going to head over to the machine and we're going to stitch both sides down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now back from the machine, I'm going to go ahead and trim some of this off and come closer to the edge so we can have a more rounded corner like this. And then I'm going to turn this right side out. Now, because this is leather, I won't be pressing it at all. Um, but if you have regular fabric, you want to go ahead and give this a good press. So you want to head over to the machine and we're going to stitch this down size across the top and down the other side a quarter inch away from the edge. Okay, so we're back from the machine. You can see I top stitched this. Now next, um, before we move along to our pocket bag, we wanna take a ruler and we're gonna measure up 5 eighths of an inch from the bottom edge and we're gonna mark it. Now I have a chalk roller and this is really good to mark on leather. Okay. Now once you do that, you want to trim it down to a quarter inch. This next step is going to be very important. Now the instructions have you uh, base this down onto your front piece, but I have a better technique and it's a little bit easier and a little bit more precise. Now because the pocket bag goes on top of this, I'm going to place this here. And mind you, you have a top stitching line and you have a bottom stitching line. The bottom stitching line, you want to line that up with the stitching line onto your welt. We're placing this upside down and your right side is gonna be on the bottom. So the wrong side of your welt is gonna be this side, which is going to be the one 
that flips up that everyone is going to see. So turn it upside down and you want to basically pin or clamp down and line up this line right here with the line on your welt. Now if you have a pin, it's a little bit easier. You can pin that bottom line and see where that pin is on underneath and you can pin through. Like I said, I won't be pinning through mine. I'm just going to be clamping it. So head to your machine and we're going to baste these two pieces together matching up the lines. Okay, so I'm just lining mine up. And like I said, I take a pin and just stick it on that line to see if it touches that line underneath. And if it does, I keep it there. You want to back it at the beginning and also at the end. Okay, once again, like I said, I take a pin and I just place it through my lining and to see if it's hitting the line that I have on my welt. And if it is, I go ahead and I stitch. Be sure to back stitch at the beginning and also at the end. And then you want to keep checking. Line that thing up. And then one more time. Okay, now we're back from the machine. We have the welt. Uh, based down onto our pocket bag. Now, one thing I want to do, I want you to note, um, if your welt pocket, once you turn the right side out, if it don't meet the dots on both sides, you want to stop stitching wherever your welt stops. You don't want to go all the way through to that dot if your welt is not touching it. I'm not sure if the pocket bag is off a little or for some reason when you turn your fabric right side out it doesn't extend uh, for me my uh, faux leather doesn't extend all the way to that marking so i'm stopping wherever my welt stops now as you can see the stitching stops here and the stitching stops here once again do not keep stitching if your welt doesn't extend all the way to that marking Okay, you just want to stop wherever your welt is. Now we're going to go ahead and grab our front piece. Now this right here is the right side, but it's the left side if you're looking at it like this. Okay, so that means your pocket is going to be slanted this way and you put your hand in this way. All right, this is the side seam. This is the front. Now we're going to take the pocket and the welt and we're going to align it onto your front piece. Now, it's easy now because you have a stitching to match up with that um, marking that's on your front piece. Now, you want to line that up. If you have pins, you want to pin it. Um, once you have it in place, we're going to head to the machine and we're going to stitch through all thicknesses. Okay, so I'm just aligning um, this stitching line with the bottom stitching line on my pattern piece. Okay, once again, we're going to be aligning this stitching line here with the stitching line here on your front piece, okay? And it's easy to see it because we have it already based, okay? So, back to the beginning and also at the end. So a little bit, then keep checking it. Now you want to be sure to stop exactly where your stitching stopped. So if you see my pin, my stitching is right here and the dot is here. My well ends where the stitching is, so that's where I'm going to stop. Okay, now that we're here, we're going to go all the way back up and we're going to stitch down where we see the stitching line here. So place it where that dot is. You want to backstitch at the beginning and also at the end. Okay, so before we get to the end, because we didn't stitch to the dot here, 
we won't stitch to the dot on this side. Mind you, if your welt extends all the way to the dot, you can go all the way there. But my stitching stops here where my welt is and I want to stop right above there. Just like that. Okay, now that we're back from the machine, we want to go ahead and take your scissors or rotary cutters and you just want to make a slit in the center and then cut until you get 5 eighths of an inch away from the end. Now, once you get 5 eighths, five eighths of an inch away, you want to take your scissors or whatever you're cutting when you angle it and you want to cut to your stitching. Now, if your stitching is in a different place than your dot, ignore your marking and go to where your stitching stops. Okay. Now here, I'm not going to cut all the way through. I'm just going to cut my lining to that stitching. Then I'm going to turn this around. Now when I get five eighth of an inch away, I'm going to cut all through upward to my stitching. Now, as you see here, I cut to my stitching. Now, if I would have cut to my marking instead of to my stitching, um, my binding box would have been too big for my welt. Now, this is very important. So next, I'm going to just only cut my lining to my marking. And I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to cut that triangle on the opposite end. I'm doing it this way because I'm trying to avoid cutting through my welt. I don't like cutting through my welt, so I just cut on both sides of the welt. Now on this side, you do the same thing. You want to cut Okay, and you should end up with a triangle on both sides, just like this. Okay, so now I'm going to take my lining piece and turn it to the inside. And that's how it's going to end up. But for now, I'm going to turn it. And if you're using regular fabric, you want to lay down your fabric, head to your pressing table and give this a good press. Okay, now that we're back, it should look like this on the back side and then like this on the front. Um, because I'm using leather, I went ahead and edge stitch on my bottom seam there just so it could lay flat. And then I edge stitch across the top here. So that's why you get this um, lining that lays flat just like that. Okay, so next we're going to Turn this right side down and we're going to grab our pocket that we cut out of fabric. So you want to do right sides facing and basically what we're going to do, you want to either pin it or clip it down. You should have a notch right here in the center. Now you want to head to the machine and stitching only on your pocket bag not on your front piece. We're going to stitch all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance down the side, around the bottom of the pocket bag, and then up the other side. Now you want to remember you have your little triangle cutout pieces. You want to make sure all of that is within the seam allowance so you can stitch that down. Okay, so I'm starting across the top in the center. So you want to back at the beginning. Now so once we get to the corner, you want to pivot. All right, so I went ahead and stitched all the way around as you can see, and then I surged all the way around. Um, I'm not going to be using um, bias tape on my pocket bag, but I will be using it for my seams. All right, so if you turn it this way, okay, so on the right side, only thing left to do is to edge stitch 
right there on that welt and then also on this side right here. Okay, so I'm gonna start on the left side here. And you just want it flat. As you can see, you can see the inside of the welt right there. So you just wanna have that extend over just a little bit. Back to the beginning, also at the end. You want to stitch the other side the same exact way. Okay, so now that we're back from the machine, as you can see, I've edge stitch here and then here, and then now your welt pocket is complete. So now we're gonna move along to our front yoke. Okay, so moving along to our front yoke. Now this front yoke is gonna lay on top of the front piece. So if you lift it up, you will see the lining. So like I said, it is optional if you wanna cut both out of uh, fabric instead of one out of lining and one out of fabric. All right, but whatever you decide, you want to place them right sides facing. And then you want to pin or either clip them together. Okay, we're gonna to head to the machine where you're only going to stitch around this curved edge here, and we're gonna stop here, leaving the top and this side right here free. And we're gonna be stitching this down using a 5 8 of inch seam allowance. Do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, now that I'm back from the machine, I'm going to just do some clipping in this curve here. That should be good. And then I'm going to trim it down just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna turn it right side out. So because this goes on the right, the side that you're looking at right here is gonna be underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, understitch as much as I can all the way around. If you wanna do that, you can, it is optional. Um, but then after I do that, I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to top stitch it a quarter inch away from the side. All right, so I'm back from the machine. Um, after I understitched, I went ahead and top stitched all the way around on this curve here. And then now I've grabbed the right um, front. And if you're looking at it like this, it looks like the left, but if you're wearing it, it's on the right side. So I'm just basically just going to take this and you should have a notch. You line that up here just like that. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and base this down here and then here. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so before we continue, you wanna be sure to stay stitch your neckline on both sides of your fronts. And then you wanna finish your other welt pocket the same exact way. Now we're going to move along to our back pieces. Okay, so the same thing with our back pieces, you want to stay stitch the neckline I'm stitching inward. Okay, also as you can see, I've already added uh, black bias tape to uh, my inside uh, raw edge. This is no different than um, serging your seams before you sew. So if you want to use bias tape, you can do the same exact thing. And as you can see, I've added it all the way down and I just left it maybe an inch away from the hem. Now, this is step number 12. Um, you also have the option to finish that edge of your vent by turning in five eighths of an inch and then stitching that down. So you could use bias tape or you could just finish that off by turning five eighths of an inch in and then stitching it down. Step number 12. So you have the option to serge your seam right now or add bias tape or however you want to finish your seams before you sew it. So we're right sides facing. You want to line it up. You should have three notches in the back. I'm gonna go ahead and put my clamps in. Okay, once you have it pinned or clamped down, you want to start at the top and you wanna stitch all the way down until you get to your dot here. There should be a marking. Don't forget to mark all of your markings. Um, you wanna stitch this down, break your stitch and because I'm not using 
a regular traditional fabric I'm using leather I won't be doing this next step but if you have a uh, regular fabric you can go ahead and continue stitching down using a basting stitch we're not stitching this closed we're only basting it closed if you don't want to base it you don't have to but basting it makes it a little bit easier with the construction process and once again you stitch from the top all the way down until you get to your marking back stitch break your thread and there should be a stitching line that goes all the way down here but it's only a basing stitch do not stitch this down with a regular stitch only baste it from the dot down and once you do that you're going to also start here at your marking and you want to stitch this little part right here down with a basting stitch as well five eighths of an inch away from this edge okay so we're back from the machine i went ahead and stitched stitched it down as you can see the seam so on the right side which is the left side right here if you turn your your jacket the way i have it you will be in good shape so you want to just take your scissors and we're going to slash until we get to that marking do not cut your thread just to it okay so i'm going to open it up now so it should open like this so now you can head to your pressing table you can press this open and then this right here your vent should lay to this side right here okay so after you give it a good press you want to you want to keep this in place right here you could pin it if you like if you're using leather you won't be able to pin it so you have to hold it and on the left side we're just going you could you can actually feel it too I want to make sure everything is flat we're going to be top stitching it down starting from the seam where that dot is and then all the way here to the edge we're just going to stitch that down right there five eighths of an inch away from the edge of the vent on the inside right here so starting where that dot is at the seam all the way to the end five eighths of an inch seam allowance just stitching that down okay so once you press this open i went ahead and just basically stitch close to the edge so my seam can lay flat because i can't press my leather so after you press that down went ahead and stitch to the left side now that vent lays to that left side which is on the right right here so once you do that you want to put it to the side for just a moment and we're going to work on the back yoke so with the back yoke you only had to cut out one i'm going to show you why i cut out two um but if you cut out one you just surge um the bottom and then just turn up five eighths of an inch you give it a good press and then you can just top stitch that down but because i want to have um fabric on both sides i'm going to use two so i'm just basically going to clip mines at the bottom so i'm going to head to the machine and i'm going to stitch this down using a five eighths of an inch seam allowance and then after i do that i'm going to under stitch one side now this right here is optional you do not have to do this step okay so after i under stitch i went ahead and top stitch a quarter inch away from the bottom and then i just baste the sides and then baste the top and then also the neck um while it's laying flat and not attached to the back yet you this is a good time to go ahead and do your buttonhole so if you know what buttons you're using um, go ahead and make that buttonhole there's a marking on the pattern piece just so you don't miss that so now we're going to grab the back piece and right sides facing we're going to put the back yoke right side up onto that pattern piece okay so if you didn't use both sides of fabric this right here would be the wrong side and the wrong side would be touching the right side of the back pattern piece all right so only thing we're going to do is pin or use your clips should be two notches up here should be a notch there and there should be two notches down here okay 
So just go back to the machine and we're just going to base this down all the way around except for the bottom here. Okay, so now that we have our back yoke based down onto our back, we're gonna grab our front pieces and we're just going to attach them at the shoulders. And you wanna pin or either use your clamps. Okay, other side. So now we're gonna to head to the machine. We're gonna just basically stitch both of the shoulders down using 5 8 of an inseam allowance. Do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, as you can see, I went ahead and attached my front and back at the shoulders. So now I'm just gonna take this and move it to the side for just a moment, and we're gonna work on the collar and the collar band. So first you wanna grab your under collar pieces, which is this piece right here. It should be two pieces. You wanna turn them right sides facing. Pin it, I'll just clip it a few times. Go ahead and stitch this down using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Press the seams, come back and we'll continue. All right, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, I went ahead and opened up my seams. Um, if you're not able to press your seams open, you can stitch on both sides of the seam, as you can see, and it will open that up and it'll keep your, your seams open and flat. Okay, so I'm just lay that down for right now. And we're going to take the upper collar and we're going to pin or either clamp it down. You should have a notch here and also here. So now we're going to head to the machine and we're going to stitch this down starting here. 5 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way across and then down to the other side, leaving the bottom open. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Now that we're back from the machine, you wanna go ahead and trim your corners. And then I can like to trim mine down to maybe 3 8 of an inch. Okay, so before we turn it right side out, we're going to do some under stitching on the under collar. So basically, you want to open it up like this. This right here is my under collar on this side because you see the seam. You want to take that seam allowance and push it to the right. And you want to get as close as you can to the edge, maybe about two inches, two or three inches from the corner. And then we're just going to edge stitch, basically stitching on the right side of the seam, catching the seam allowance. And we're going to go as far as we can, about two or three inches away on the other side. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that you see I did my understitching, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this right side out. Poke out your corners really good. Okay. So that understitching on the under collar allows your under collar to roll to the inside. And it should basically look just like this. And now that seam is right there and not at the edge. So once again, if you have regular fabric, you can go ahead and give this a good press. Um, if not, um, you can just skip pressing it. So we're gonna head to the machine and we're going to top stitch a quarter inch from the edge. We're gonna pivot, go across the bottom and then pivot to the other side. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, after you um, top stitch a quarter inch away from the edge across the top here. You want to just base that down and you can have yeah. And you'll have two notches to indicate the top Okay, now we're going to sandwich the collar in between the collar band so You're going to take one of your collar bands and there are two notches towards the top just like that So you want to have one right side up and then you want your under collar to be touching the one that's laying down like that. And then we're gonna sandwich the other one with the two notches matching all of the two notches here. And we're going to either pin or use your clamps. So we're gonna head to the machine and we're going to start on one end and we're gonna stitch 
using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Come to the corner here and pivot. So all the way across, pivot one more time, and we're gonna end on the other side. Once again, we're using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, now that we have this stitch, you want to just double check to make sure you didn't get any of that collar on any one of your sides before we trim. So I just clipped into it just a little bit so I can get a good um, turn. Okay. All right, so if you're working with um, a regular fabric, you can go ahead and press. Um, if not, um, we want to skip the pressing and just go ahead and just clip down the bottom. Okay, so now we're going to head to the machine. We're going to top stitch a quarter inch away from the side and then a quarter inch away from this inside seam here and then pivot and then down this side as well. Once you do that, you want to go ahead and just base the bottom close. Okay, now that we have our collar and collar band prepared, we're going to go ahead and grab our front and back pieces. And then now we're going to attach this to our jacket. So, so you want your under collar to be touching the back. And now we're just going to pin or either clamp this down. Shape a notch there and a notch here. The end of your collar band should be touching a big dot. I went and put a notch instead of a dot. It made it easier for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure that. Okay, so head to the machine. We're just going to base this down. Okay, now that we have the collar and the collar band uh, based onto the jacket, we're gonna go ahead and close out the side seams. So right sides facing, you wanna put your front front and your back on top of each other like this. And then you wanna take your clips, either your pins, you wanna secure where your notch is first, and then all the way down. So just head to the machine and we're gonna start at the top and stitch all the way down using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. You wanna pin and sew or clip the other side the same exact way. Okay, as you can see, I went ahead and stitched down my side seams. I put a bias on that side seam and then I stitched it down to the back um, because I can't press it. So next, we're going to go ahead and move along to our front facing and our back facing. Okay, so for the back facing, I went ahead and finished the bottom with a um, bias tape. You can serge and just fold under um, five eighths of an inch and then top stitch it. But for me, like I said, I want the bias um, finish. And I did the same thing for my front facing. And you're basically just gonna do the side that curve. You can do the hem, like I said, um, serge and then turn on the five eighth of an inch and then stitch or you can use bias tape uh, peak and shear zigzag stitch whatever you want to finish yours off and then I went ahead and stay stitch the fronts of the front facing as you can see and then you're supposed to stay stitch the back but I didn't do the back because I don't think I need it so next we're gonna go ahead and attach these to the shoulders so right sides facing, you want to line them up just like this. You can pin or either use your clips. Okay, so we're now we're gonna head to the machine and we're going to stitch both shoulders down using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so after you stitch down the shoulders, obviously you wanna press um, your seams open. For me, I just stitch close to the seam on both sides to flatten out that seam because I have full leather once again. And this is the shape you're gonna have. So now we're going to turn this right sides facing onto our jacket. So you want to have the collar and the collar band pressed down. Well, just facing down rather. And then 
we're going to take the facing and we're going to match up our darts first. You have a double notch here that you want to match up. Okay, so if you didn't notice on your pattern piece, um, it says to ease. So if you didn't notice on your pattern piece, it says to ease right here. Um, mine's, can, mine's got a little give so I can pull it for it to fit. So when I start sewing, I'm going to just pull it a little bit and stitch just to get rid of that fabric right there. Uh, but if your fabric is really stiff and it don't move, you want to do um, two rows of basing stitches right here and just ease that just a little bit, okay? Okay, so now that I have it all uh, together, we're going to start. We're going to start down here at the hem on one side. We're going to sew all the way up. Get here, pivot, go across the neckline, making sure that our collar and our collar band is tucked in. And then basically you come to the corner and pivot and go all the way down to the hem here. Once again, if your fabric don't give, you have to ease this portion in. So basically do two rows of basing stitches and just ease it in a little bit so that can fit perfect. Stitch, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that we're back from the machine, I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming. So I'm not trimming too much off my um, neck, but I am making little clips in here. I'm turn it right side out, point your corners out. Okay, so before I tuck this underneath, you want to go ahead and go to the machine and we're going to under stitching on the facing starting at the at the collar band here and all the way through to this side. So basically you're just going to take it, you're going to put your seam allowance on the facing and you're going to stitch close to that seam right there. Okay, so we're back from the machine. Um, we did our under stitching on our facing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the facing we're going to turn it under and we're going to match up the seams, match up both shoulder seams just like that. And then you're going to either pin or clip along that armhole. We will be basting this down. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So take your facing and we're gonna turn it under and we're gonna match up those shoulder seams right there and either pin or clip. So now we're gonna head over to the machine and we're going to base this down, um, basting through all th thicknesses. So the facing will stay in place underneath the shoulder. Okay, so moving right along, we have the jacket almost complete. We gotta add our sleeves and a few other little minor details. Um, so let me go ahead and open it up. You have the facing attached, inside front facing and the back facing. And then now we're going to work on the hem. I'm gonna move this up. 
So we're going to turn the facing onto itself just like this. So just like that, and we're going to pin either clip. And then same thing to the other side. Okay, so we're gonna be doing a one and a half inch hem allowance. So we're gonna start right here at the stitching and then stitch all the way until we get to the end of the facing, okay? You wanna do both sides the same exact way. Okay, so this is how the hem look right here. So we're going to cut five eighths of an inch away from the edge of the facing and then also five eighths of an inch away from um, the stitching right here. Let's see, let me see if I can mark it off to be precise. Okay, so this is how it's going to look once you do that. So it's gonna look just like this. You wanna give this a good press if you have a regular fabric. Uh, you wanna do both front corners the same exact way. And then also, you want to do the left side of the vent the same way. Now you want to take the vent on the left side, turn it onto itself like this. And we're going to stitch this across, do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, once again, this is the front. And then this right here is the left vent, left side of the vent. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing. Turn this right side out. And since I can't press this, I'm going to go ahead and put a clip where the hem stops so everything can be precise when it comes to the hem. So we have the, uh, the left side, which is on the right side right now, bent um, hem done. I'm going to put a clip there too, just so it could be in the right place. So since it's an inch and a half, I'm going to turn under a half inch. So I have a regular one inch hem since it's an inch and a half total. So I'm just going to turn it under just like that. And then since I can't pin, I'm going ahead and clip it down. So that's how I'm going to finish off the hem. Uh, the instructions might tell you to do a blind hem or a slip stitch. Um, I would do that if I had a different type of fabric, but I'm not gonna do that on this um, faux leather. I'm just going to turn under a half inch, and then on this side, I'm going to stitch, stitch it down across the bottom. And then the same thing on this side. I'm going to turn under a half inch and then finish the hem by top stitching on this side at a at one inch. So I'm just going to clip all the way across to keep everything in place since I cannot pin it or press it. But right here, I finished it with bias tape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to undo my threads just right here. So I'm just gonna take my thread and just open this up a little bit. Okay, just like that. And then here, I'm just going to turn under that half inch. And then once I'm done, I can put that back on top and I have a clean finish right here. So go ahead and make your mind up how you wanna finish your hem. 
um, if you want to turn under a quarter inch or half inch like me or just serge it and then press it all the way up and have a big one and a half inch stitching or a slip stitch so whatever you decide go ahead and do that now okay so as you can see the hem is done and then right after you do that you want to stitch starting at that that dot and then a quarter inch away stitch and then go all the way down to the hem and you want to do that for for both sides all right so right now you want to put this to the side for just a moment and we're going to focus on our shoulder tabs so it's pretty simple right size facing you want to go to the machine and we're going to stitch all the way around except for the bottom here go up across and then down using three eighths of an inch seam allowance not five eighths three eighths once you do that you're going to turn the right side out you're going to poke out your corners you're going to um, top stitch a quarter inch away from the edge and then also do your buttonhole and then once you do that you want to go ahead and attach them right here on your shoulder and you're just going to tack that down so go ahead and do the other one the same exact way and base it on your other shoulder here okay as you can see i went ahead and based my shoulder tabs right here where the shoulder is and for right now i'm going to put this to the side and we're going to work on our sleeves pattern piece number 16 is the um sleeve tab now this is pretty long because um it's meant to have a buckle and the buckle allows it to be long enough and, and wrap around and secure the sleeve you can see it in detail on your instructions um, so if you want to do that version obviously you're going to cut four and then two of interfacing if you have regular fabric and there are markings i went ahead and did some notches to indicate where the placement go but once you turn it right side out after you stitch two of them one interfaced and one uninterfaced right size facing and then you do a five eighths of an inch um, seam allowance once you turn the right side out that placement should be right there and then also you have a stitching line right here now this is where you stitch and then the buckle would slide through and then it would stop right there automatically and then you just put it in the middle until um, you do the other stitching but for me um, I just want a regular sleeve tab with the buttonhole and the button on the front so what I did was I went ahead and I measured from one end to one end at the widest width so if you want to have this same one that I'm doing um, this is how you measure it out because this one right here is pretty long with the buckle so a right size facing you want to go ahead and go to the machine stitch going up one side across the top and then down the other side leaving the bottom open using five eighths of an inch do that come back and we'll continue okay i'm gonna trim my corners then we we'll trim this down to about quarter inch or three eighths of an inch and i'm just going to turn it right side out okay so go ahead and press um, your sleeve tab if if it's not faux leather or any kind of exotic fabric like this i'm gonna go ahead and top stitch all the way around leaving the bottom open um, a quarter inch away from the side and then also you want to go ahead and do your buttonhole now you want to place your buttonhole maybe a quarter inch within the quarter inch top stitch so do all that come back and we'll continue so i went ahead and did my buttonhole and it stitched all the way around with a quarter inch away from the edge and i basted it here on um on this side now this is the side that is shorter it's going to go on the inside of your arm and then you want to go you want to get a pin and put it like a quarter inch inside your buttonhole from the left and then place where your button is going to go that's going to be a great placement and then next you want to grab your carrier and basically what you're going to do is you're going to fold 
in one half and then the other half like that and then you're going to fold that entire thing in half just like this you want to now take this to the machine and we're going to stitch close to the edge and then you're going to stitch close to the folded edge too now when you do that it's going to look just like this now you want to measure two and three fourths of an inch and this is how you do the placement for this particular sleeve tab style not the other one the other placement I'm gonna show you that later but for this one if you're doing this one um, you want to go ahead and tuck under three eighths of an inch you can measure if you need to I'm just eyeball it and we're going to place it just past the buttonhole to the right now once you get that placement you can go ahead and and mark it okay so I'm going to mark it just a little closer where that tab is at okay so now I can put this out the way and then place this here you want to place it just past maybe one eighth of an inch past your marking and then stitch it down and then you're going to do the other one the same exact way you're going to fold under three eighths of an inch and you're just going to add stitch the top do that come back and we'll continue okay then i have it stitched down on the top and the bottom you want to go ahead and cut away that extra excess okay and then it fits in perfect just like that so last thing you have to do is just hand tack your um, button and you'll be pretty much finished with this method um, but you want to wait until we do this scene before adding the button okay so now um, I went ahead and grabbed my undersleeve and on the inside there are two notches you want to do two rows of basing stitches and gather just a little bit right here for ease and once you do that you want to turn this right side facing and you want to stitch starting at the sleeve hem all the way up to here using five eighths of an inch seam allowance so go ahead and do your two rows of basing stitches and ease and do that seam come back and we'll continue okay so now i went ahead and ease that a little bit i'm gonna take that out of the belt loop so it won't be too close to the seam and I'm going ahead and turn this right size facing I'm going to go ahead and add my clips match up your notches your notches should match up so if it's too much let it out and if it's not enough just ease it a little bit more okay so go ahead and do this seam using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance do that come back and we'll continue okay now that I have this stitched together you want to press your seam for me like I said I went ahead and just edge stitched on this side here so I can lay my um, seams flat so next we're just going to move this out the way and we're going to do the same thing on this side so just pin or clamp And there's no easing on this side so just match up that double knot you have and everything should match up so now we we'll just do the same thing stitch this side down using five eighths of an inch seam allowance also be sure not to get your tab caught into this seam it should not be caught up all right so i'm back from machine and it should look like this now if you're doing the sleeve tab with the buckle you want to place your belt loop not here but here you want to place it right here okay so now i'm gonna go ahead and put my button on and then i'm gonna go ahead and prep my lining so for your lining places you want to take your undersleeve and do that gathering right there the same way and then for both of them you want to take off an inch off the hem so let me go ahead and measure that out Okay. 
Okay, so do the other one the same exact way. I'm just going to trim it off. Okay, so go ahead and stitch your lining together the same way we did our sleeve here. And don't forget to go ahead and add your button now if you're doing buttons. Okay, I went ahead and put my lining together. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to put this inside. And grab my clamps. If you have regular fabric, you can go ahead and pin. I'm going to use my clamps. I'm going to clamp first on the seams. Match those up. And then continue pinning or clamping. Okay, so we're just going to head over to the machine. And we're going to stitch all the way around using a half inch seam allowance. Do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're going to turn this out like this. And then you're just going to take that lining and pull it towards you. Okay. So at this point, you want to decide how you want the inside of your armhole to be finished. Um, I'm going to give you two options. Um, the first option, you can go ahead and um, ease in your sleeve cap separate for your sleeve and then also your sleeve lining. You don't want to base them together. And then you go ahead and you attach your sleeve to your jacket without your sleeve lining. After you do that, you want to ease in your sleeve cap for your lining and then press under 5 eighths of an inch all the way around. And then you'll be able to slip stitch this. But for me, I'm going to be using bias um, tape on my seam. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and base this all together. So this is how the instructions have you do it as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and clamp it up. Match all your notches up. I'm gonna put a few more in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and head to the machine and I'm gonna base all the way around. And then after I do that, I'm going to ease in the sleeve cap. So I'm going to start, where is it? I'm going to start at one of my notches. This is my double notch. And then I'm going to go around until I get to my single notch, which is right here. You're going to do two rows of basting stitches and then ease that in, okay? If you're doing it the first method, you don't want to base these together. You want to ease both the sleeve caps in separately. Okay, so I went ahead and eased my sleeve cap on both of my sleeves. And then I went ahead and tacked down my lining right there um, through the lining and in, onto the fabric so it won't pull. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the jacket. I'm just going to start with one of my sleeves. So I'm going to, I'm going to match up one of my notches. So that's my double notch right there. I'm going to go ahead and clamp that. And then I'm going to bring it to the inside. Just like this. Okay. And we're going to continue pinning. If you didn't want to do it this method, I'm going to be finishing mine off with a bias tape. But if you wanted to have your seam encased into the actual um, sleeve, um, like I said, these right here would be separate. And then you would just basically um, stitch on the sleeve first and then take your lining and then hand stitch it, slip stitch it on just like that. OK, but I'm going to do the same method that it shows in the instructions 
And this is how I wanted mine done because I'm finished it off with a bias tape. Okay, so basically I'm just going to pin. And then you just want to see how much you have to take in more or take in less. So I have to do mine just a little bit more. Okay, that should do it. Okay, so we have it all set up. Now just head to the machine and we're going to do a 5 8 7 inch seam allowance all the way around. Do that, come back, and we'll continue. You want to pin or clip and stitch your other sleeve to your jacket the same exact way. Okay, as you can see, I have both of my sleeves added. I'm going to go ahead and finish off my seams later uh, with bias tape. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and move along to um, our belt tabs. So the remainder of uh, the tabs, if you cut it in half, you should have three and a half inches. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and slide up. So on the side, you should have two markings for your placement. Mine is right here. Lay this out flat. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're going to put this on the same way we did the tabs on our sleeve. So basically turn in three eighths of an inch. You want to stitch that down and then the same thing for the one up top. Turn under and then top stitch that down. Okay, so you wanna do this one and then the other one the same exact way on the other side. Okay, so we added the belt loops right here for our belt and then now we're going to sew that up. So this is the belt. So you wanna fold it onto itself, right sides facing. And then now we're going to start on one end, stitch up, pivot, and then you want to sew until about halfway. And then when you get to the middle, you want to leave about a five inch opening and then stitch all the way to this side, pivot, and then down the other side. Once you do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and trim some of my corners. Trim some of that down. Okay, so now we're going to turn this right side out. So if you have regular fabric, go ahead and give it a good press. If not, you can just skip that and start stitching a quarter inch away from the edge all the way around. And then when you get to the opening, you're just going to tuck that seam allowance in and you're going to add stitch and then you're going to stitch a quarter inch away from the edge just like the other stitches okay so i'm finally done i went ahead and finished off my belt you can see the top stitch and i closed up my opening um only thing left to do is to do your buttonholes and then put your buttons on if you wanted to do the buckle for the belt it is step number 53 only thing you do is to take one end and loop it. And once you loop it, you're just going to stitch it and then you have that buckle. All right. Other than that, we're all done. All right. You did it. Congratulations. You have your very own trench coat and I can't wait to see you post them all online. And please tag me at Norris Danta Ford and we'll see you in the next so long.